Hello and welcome to week six, an introduction to psychology. And here we're going to be starting our chapter on learning. Now, learning, of course, is a huge part of psychology. And my doctorate is in educational psych, which is really the uh, field of studying, teaching, and learning. Uh, for me in particular, uh, study, uh, studying the concept of teaching and learning online. And um, what I'm going to be doing in this chapter is introducing you to the two areas of learning, but it's not the totality of psychology and learning. It's going to be, we're going to talk about classical conditioning and operant conditioning. We're then going to be moving over in another part of the course, we're going to be talking about assimilation and accommodation, the other, like motivated learning and, and whatnot. But right now we're sort of talking about mechanisms that account for our behavior that we are, we don't even necessarily need to be uh, cognizant of them. Uh, animals learn by classical conditioning and operant conditioning, and those principles apply there. So you're going to be learning about those too. In the discussion, I'm actually going to be having you reflect upon operant conditioning. Now, operant conditioning is when you have antecedents, the circumstances in which when the behavior is expected to occur, and you have consequences such as rewards or pay, grades, being praised, whatever you feel is a reward, and then those operate upon the behavior. So if you A, antecedents, B, behavior, C, consequence, the A, B, C, contingency theory is what we refer to when we're talking about this. This particular theory has been very, very good at achieving the goals of psychology, which is to describe, explain, predict, and control. Operant conditioning is probably the most successful in that. It very much describes behavior. It very much explains it in terms of reinforcements and punishments. We can predict behavior based on that, and certainly it's one of the most successful intervention methods. What I'm going to be asking you to do in the discussion is to relate to normal everyday events in your life that fit that model. All kinds of them. I'll give you one. Okay, I have a job. I have to um, show up. So my alarm I, in the morning, that's the A, my alarm clock goes off. That's the A. The behavior that's expected from me is I reach over and press the snooze button 12 times. Now, I'm supposed to get up. So I stop the alarm clock and I get up. And what's the reinforcer? I get to work on time. So that, we, it's just descriptive. So I'm asking you to reflect upon some of that in the discussion. In the quiz, I'm asking you to take on the subject of do human beings still have instincts? What's the difference between learning and instincts? That means what I'm asking you to do, you're looking up both of those. You're taking into consideration classical and operant conditioning, the two modes of learning we're learning in this chapter, and you're comparing them to instincts. So you have to look that up. Tell me what that's all about. Give me an example of each and maybe speculate. Do human beings still have instincts? And then in the assignment for this week, it's classical conditioning. So we have operant conditioning in the discussion. We have learning versus instinct in the quiz. And then I'm actually asking you to apply the concepts of classical conditioning, learning by association, to an ad, to an advertisement. In the course book, I give an example of a Coors Light ad. And in the, uh, in the assignment, there's a picture of a girl holding a tray of Coca-Cola. So, and what you're identifying are the parts of that ad that explain how classical conditioning actually plays out in advertising. In fact, it's, it's the primary psychology behind the effectiveness of advertising. Now, I, uh, this is supposed to be the week for midterm, but I got them in a week early, so don't have to worry about that. This uh, late start supposed to be this week, so we're all set with that. However, we're in the learning chapter and we're looking at operant conditioning. I want you to now look at the end of the book under the special assignments 
and we're looking at our second special assignment. This is a personal change project where you are going to create a behavior plan for yourself using the ABC contingency theory, what we're learning about this week. So you're going to follow the instructions to identify a plan, to identify a behavior that you want to have increased. It's a little bit more complex when we're looking to decrease a behavior. I'd, I'd prefer we didn't get into that. That takes a little bit more uh, labor and instruction that's for this class. Go ahead and take my behavior management class and we go right into that. But you want, it, you, want, you want to exercise more, you want to eat healthier foods, you want to drink enough water, you want to get your homework done, those kinds of things. You can put yourself on a behavior plan where you have the antecedents, you know, your weekly schedule, what are you going to do, and then a reward mechanism. And the importance of the reward mechanism is to address the fact that those behaviors are not happening all on their own. We don't create behavior plans for things we're already doing. The natural availability of reinforcers, or if you're feeling good, or the rewards that we get maintain that just fine. We only focus on problematic behaviors, things we haven't been able to make a habit out of. So this is a mechanism for creating a habit using the ABC contingency theory. What I'm going to offer you is to send, if you want, to send your assignment to me before you implement it. Start working on it right now. Come up with a behavior plan following in detail the instructions that are in the course book and send it to me. And I'll critique it. I'll, you know, maybe I'll question some of the pieces of it. Get that started. And it's kind of an opportunity for you to do some self-improvement while you're here in this class. So bonus, bonus, you get my class, you get grades, you get high school credit, you get college credit, and you get self-improvement. What a deal. What a deal. Okay, so that's it for this week. I look forward to getting some of these assignments. And like I said, please send me any questions or ideas that you have about your behavior management plans or your personal change project, to use the words from the class, and have a great week.